welcome to a super special podcast episode. And I want to let you know that I made this podcast to help you in your dating journey, in your journey to great relationships. And sometimes it requires that I get vulnerable myself. And today is one of those episodes. I want to talk to you about a past relationship that I had that kind of provides that model of the situationship of the person who's unsure of the emotionally unavailable partner and what I learned from that experience. And I want to talk to you about some of the things that might be tripping you up when you find yourself in that kind of relationship. Okay. So this is going to be high value. We're going to learn a lot here. You will learn from my experience and I'm, I'm grateful that if I share this, maybe it'll help someone else who's been in a similar situation. And you know what I'm talking about? The kind of relationship where you're the one who's texting first. You're the one who's making the plans. You're the one who's putting the effort in. You're the one who's initiating the what are we conversations. And you keep getting pulled into it and you're not sure why. And it feels like no matter what you do, you can't quite break free. You might have a few days, like three to four days where you feel great. You're doing your own thing. You're independent. Forget about that person. And then they text you and ask you to hang out and you're immediately texting them back and you're going to hang out with them. So this kind of anxious attachment pulled to avoidant attachment the magnetic pull of the anxiously attached person and the avoidantly attached person and the emotionally unavailable person. And I, and I want to talk about this. So I'm going to break it down. This relationship lasted about six months. And the reality is it was never clearly defined. I may have had moments where I thought it was clearly defined and perhaps there were times, especially in the beginning where it seemed as though it had a ton of potential. Um, However, pretty quickly it became clear that this person was not emotionally available. And here's one of the things I learned from this relationship. Number one, You have to be careful that you are not holding so tightly to what you want and what you desire and the timeline that you have for your life that you're not able to see the person in front of you clearly. So essentially what had happened is I was so very ready to be in a great relationship, to emotionally invest, to show up. I'd done a ton of work on myself. I'm super ready for this. Um, I was in a place where there weren't a ton of great partners. So I had almost this scarcity mindset of, oh my gosh, there's this professional guy who's good looking Um, who likes the same things I like, we can have great conversations and this is the person that I'm going to build that relationship with that I've been waiting for. And this was, you know, approaching 30 for me. And I had that number in my head of my timeline of, oh my gosh, I never thought I would get to 30 and not have that relationship that I always wanted. So I'm sharing this with you because it's some clear examples of how my mindset was really sabotaging me in my dating life. I was so adamant on what I wanted and when it was going to happen and how it was going to happen. And, um, 
I essentially filtered out the things that I didn't want to see the things like him canceling plans last minute, um, the things like work being so, so busy every single day that there was no time to go to dinner. Um, the things like him being unable to have a conversation about where we see things going, et cetera. Um, and the reality is, is when we did have those conversations, at one point he had said, oh yeah, I'm open to see where it goes. And to me, I'm like, great, I'm relaxed. I'm open to see where it goes too. Let's get to know each other. But then when we revisited that conversation a couple months into the relationship, his response was, this feels like too much. He wasn't even willing to have the conversation. And I knew if I would have been honest with myself at that time, I knew that that meant he didn't have the emotional capacity to build a relationship. So, so many of us can get stuck in this trap where we have our timeline. We know what we want. We know that we're ready. This person seems like they're a pretty good fit. Like everything looks good on paper. And then if we could just get them to emotionally invest and get them to show up, we know we could have a great relationship. And the reality is younger Morgan probably would have stayed in that relationship for years and just kind of been off on, are we together? Are we not? And I'm proud of myself that it was only six months of my life. But even then, had I been super honest and had I acknowledged that, wow, I'm really pushing what I want here and I'm not accepting the reality of what's in front of me, that would have been very helpful. Additionally, of course, those anxious attachment strategies were coming up for me and I was doing a really good job of handling them. However, this is a key point. Take this away. If the relationship that you are in is causing you to revert back to old ways of being where you're constantly feeling anxious attachment or avoidant attachment, that can give you a ton of data about the relationship. And I so badly wanted it to work. I so badly was ready for a great relationship that I didn't pay attention to that data. All right. This person will re remain anonymous, but I just want to, I just want to let you know, I'm sure some of you have done this. Even when I knew that it wouldn't work, even when I had ended it, there was still part of me that thought, you know what? Maybe he just doesn't see how great I am. He doesn't see what he's missing out on. And I, I sent him this text. Hey, B, do you want to have dinner tomorrow just as friends? I've been wanting to check out this new local place. Here's what he says back, y'all. He says, promise me that you won't fall back in love. I mean, I will turn down my charm a bit, but I can't turn it off. But I will turn it down. Oh my gosh. When I look at that now, it's classic avoidant attachment. And I just go, what was I even doing? I, I was putting energy into something that, as you all know, I describe as a plastic plant. This had zero potential this was also someone who, you know, one of the things I talk about with avoidant attachment, he constantly would make jokes that seemed harmless, but jokes where he's putting me down or making fun of me. And some of those jokes were even about um, how driven I was and how, um, you know, how I was really passionate about my work. And when, when I think about this now, I'm going, oh my gosh, he was feeling very, very insecure in a new job. 
And it made him feel better to be able to put me down in that way. And it was the way that he could distance himself from me because those quote unquote put downs when it's coming from an avoidantly attached person, they're really a way to kind of protect the intimacy or prevent the intimacy from really, really deepening because what it does is it takes away from some of that safety that you really feel with somebody. When somebody says, wow, you're amazing. I so appreciate you. I see you for who you are and you're amazing. Wow. I feel so lucky to be with you. When someone says that, that creates so much closeness, so much vulnerability. So the opposite of that from avoidantly attached folks is this defense mechanism of kind of making fun of you. And it's, it's honestly not super conscious and sure, even in the most healthy, securely attached relationships, we can poke fun at our partners. Absolutely. There's humor. There's something for that, but I'm talking about the person who constantly is, is making those sarcastic put down remarks. It really is a defense mechanism and it's a way to keep their emotional distance from you. Okay. So I'm sharing this whole story. I read you that text message. And what I want you to know is number one, you cannot let your desires where you want to be the imagined timeline that you had for your life. You cannot let that control your dating decisions, number one, where you should be by now, what people will think, et cetera. All of that cannot control your dating decisions, okay? Number two, when someone tells you who they are, when you have those signs of, wow, they really were not open to that conversation, you have to give the feedback and if, if the person is not willing to meet you or they're not willing to have conversations three months in about where this is going, how it's developing, that is your answer. They don't have the emotional capacity to even talk about growing together, let alone do the actual work to grow together. So I definitely want you to learn <laughs> from my pain, learn from my pain, learn from what I went through. And I'm sure, I'm sure that you can learn from this and that you've had your own experiences. <sighs> Sigh. And I, <laughs> I will say this, anyone that you have an interaction with, there are always things that you can take away. There's always things you can learn about yourself. Even if, you know, in this experience, for example, I learned more about what my needs are and the level of communication that I need and the closeness that I desire. Maybe there are, well, I know, I know that there are people out there who are comfortable with very little intimacy and very little closeness. And that's what they will stick with because that's what feels safe. And they'll be in that relationship pattern probably the rest of their life. And that's the kind of connection they desire where there's not that emotional safety. There's not that real closeness. You're not intentionally building a relationship together. Some people will be okay there. Are they really, truly happy and really, truly feeling safe and connected and investing in a relationship that can last a lifetime? I don't know, but that might be where they're comfortable. And I can acknowledge just like you can, that you want something connected, safe, intentional with both people showing up and building a securely attached relationship just because you've never experienced it before doesn't mean 
that it's not available to you and that you're not allowed to desire that. So while this person may have had a totally different framework for what a relationship was and how they wanted a relationship to be in their life, the role they wanted it to play, that's totally fine. The reality is it didn't match up with my standards and my template for a healthy relationship. And letting that person go was incredibly freeing and so good. And like I said, younger Morgan probably would have stayed in that relationship for who knows how long. Um, But I knew ultimately that it wasn't what I wanted. Okay. I hope this episode was helpful. I think a lot of you can relate to this kind of relationship, like the situationship, like, well, I don't know if they're going to text me this weekend. Maybe. I don't know if we're going to actually do that trip that we said we would. It might happen. Or the person who's randomly texting you like twice a month, they're, maybe they're you know calling you at 7 or 9 p.m. on a Saturday, like, are you available? Basically, that person who will sometimes say, I want a relationship, but then not actually do any of the effort to make one happen. And if that's you and you, you're there, I know it's confusing. And I want you to know a healthy, reciprocal, emotionally available relationship is out there for you and you deserve that. Okay. And if you need help, as you know, I have the empowered, secure, and loved eight week relationship coaching program. That's where I help women break these patterns so that you're no longer staying stuck in patterns like this or relationships like this. And so that you can finally do the internal work that allows you to embody the securely attached woman and allows you to build a healthy relationship that can be a great relationship that's intentional and that can grow. So I'm super passionate about this because I've been there. I know what it feels like to get stuck in relationships that go nowhere. And I know that other women deserve to know how to break that cycle too. All right. I appreciate each and every one of you who tunes in and listens. And I want you to know that I'm always thinking of how I can make this podcast better, how I can serve you to give you the topics that you really want. You can shoot me a DM on Instagram. I would love to hear from you. The Instagram is just DR Morgan coaching. Um, and of course, I'm wishing you high self-worth and great relationships. I'll talk to you soon.